Let's talk about the design of uh, the discone antenna that uh, I put together. Uh, as you can see, um, I based it all on uh, an SO239 female connector. Um, you know, I got a pack, of, a cheap pack of five for seven bucks, so that wasn't too expensive. Um, the mast and the spacer here, those are both three quarter inch PVC. And they just happen to fit nicely around the connector um, and um, look like it, it fit pretty well. I and did end up um, using adhesive to make these joints right here to stick it to um, the connector. The Of course the disc, as we saw the disc, and the cone uh, are made out of quarter inch hardware cloth, uh, chicken wire as I call it. Um, real easy to work with. Um, and I did have to make this little spacer, that top uh, PVC um, piece uh, is supposed to separate or insulate that top disc from the cone. Uh, and based on the calculator, I needed about a hundred thousand separation between the disc and the cone. But because my cone is all tied into the connector, the actual tip of the cone from a potential standpoint is right here at the top of the SO connector. Um, so this distance here um, I had at one uh, hundred thousandths, um, which made uh, this PVC piece a little longer, so I think it was it came out to about two hundred thousandths. Uh, it's not trying to scale here, obviously, but um, that's how I took the dimensions. Yeah, even though the chicken wire cone top is down here, um, the actual uh, from a potential standpoint, it's really the tip of the the case of the SO connector. So uh, I did uh, use some copper wire here. Um, and solder to the, uh, the panel mount or the, the holes in the flange of the connector. Soldered them at the top right here uh, and then soldered them back to the um, the cone down at the this interface here to basically tie all of those components to the same potential. And of course I fed a uh, the coax up, up through here. Uh, to connect to the, the wire, which once I glued it, I put everything together, I'm not getting that coax cable out anymore, so um, it did work. You saw the results last video. Everything worked out okay, um, other than, you know, so, and I think it's fairly cheap, but if we look at it, um, it's, it seems to be a little more complicated um, than it needs to be. Um, it does use a connector, and at least the connectors I got didn't like soldering those copper wires to the flange. It basically heated up the insulator inside, and it shrank the insulator so um, the center pin uh, would would fall out. Um, not not so much once I put the connector on the backside, but uh, it did um, it did not like the the soldering there. Oh, and I forgot to mention the center pin uh, had a lead on here, um, and I soldered soldered that to the top cone or the top disc. Um, so that's that's the version that we saw in the video. But I did have an idea of version two um, to simplify it quite a bit. So if we go down to look at version two, still have a PVC uh, pipe coming in um, uh, for the majority of it, but no, gone is the connector. And what I'm actually going to do is feed the coax um, up through there and then through a hole, um, I'll bring the shield uh, out uh, outside the PVC and connect it to the cone. Same hardware cloth um, for the so um, 
for the cone and the disc. Um, and this will come up and the center conductor uh, will stick through the cone and then of course another uh, solder that. So one solder connection on this, no connector um, on here. I don't think I'll need to epoxy the um, disc to the PVC, but we'll see. I, I'm not sure. this Now that it's not a rigid connector, this coax may not be um, rigid enough to hold, so that may flop around up top. So may put uh, some epoxy here just to keep that cone in center. And then what I was looking at is to hold the cone on, I do have um, some stainless steel tie wraps um, that I use for my um, uh, for my motorcycle repair <laughs> you know when we're out on the field they're, they're, they come in handy um, they're pretty cheap you can find them on, on Amazon um, but basically now that becomes the top conductor so on just like we did with version 1 I need a hundred thousandths between the bottom of the cone, disc and the top of the cone, and since that tie wrap is going to be at the same potential as the cone, I will just basically strap that down right at a hundred thou uh, gap. And I think this will be much, much simpler um, on on the uh, to make, and it'll be a lot cheaper. No connector, one solder condition. I should be able to whip this out um, uh, pretty quickly. So, uh, a couple notes on the dimensions um, for the, the disc cone. Uh, there's a couple resources um, you can look up. Um, this is the site, don't ask me to pronounce that, but uh, if you Google disc cone antenna calculator, um, PHP, you can see it's all one word, disc cone antenna calculator, PHP, uh, up there. It basically gives you the dimensions the diameter of the cone, the, uh, the diameter of the disc up top, the diameter of the bottom of the cone, the minimum diameter of the top of the cone, and then of course the, the overall uh, length. Um, if you just type in the, the minimum frequency you want, it looks, it must uh, be pretty uh, high-end and uh, doesn't look like there's anything important about the upper uh, receiving band, but uh, like I said, I went to, I made my antenna good for 400 megahertz and above um, and you see it makes a let me get some inches I'm still in inches here but as you can see a fairly compact uh, cone uh, the disc is roughly six inches in diameter and the overall height just above seven inches um, and again for those high frequencies you don't need a very big one uh, most of the commercial ones, you know, they're really there for, um, they usually start out at 100, and they, they usually have an aerial up top for high frequency, but uh, they usually start at uh, UHF uh, or um, VHF. And so 100 megahertz, look at these cone diameters, so the disc goes up to 23 inches, the overall height is 28 inches, um, and that looks about in line with some of the, like the diamond antennas are pretty big I think with the HF aerial at the top they're over five feet tall so uh, mine is is pretty simple uh, small I can put a couple of them up in the attic or outside uh, I, I think they're too fragile for outside so I'll put them up in the attic as you can see as you remember I, I got pretty good uh, performance out of it just sitting it in the middle of my room next to the desk um, another thing you know I was looking at is how to make the cone to specific dimensions well, going back uh, online again, there happens to be a website for making uh, a template to cut out to, to make a cone. So uh, I think I had a half inch top diameter. Uh, the base was just about eight inches and the height was just about seven inches. And uh, I did do the join tab to get a little tab there and then uh, just so I have a region to overlap on it. Um, and you can see I printed this out on the printer, uh, made a template, cut it out, and then I just trace it on the uh, chicken wire. 
cut it out and fold it up. Uh, and I made a couple jigs, or a cheap jig, to clamp the cone together while I solder the overlapping region. So, but that is uh, sort of the resources I use to um, make this little do-it-yourself project. So I'm sort of excited to get get working on this V2 version. Uh, if you look at it, much simpler uh, than what I started out with. Uh, get rid of that connector. It should be pretty, uh, pretty simple there. So. Uh, all right. Well, that's it. Let's see how it turns.